Well, hello, Kelly. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday to you, Lisa. We are one day away from the weekend, which means, what do you think that means? Boating. Boating. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, we have a great show for uh, everybody out there today in all the world of boating. Uh, We're going to start off with some headlines, uh, new Coast Guard laws, which are Mm -hmm. uh, going into place. Also, Volvo Penta has an assisted docking feature that we're going to be discussing. And Tyga... The boat company uh, is celebrating 30 years, so you have to check that out. Happy birthday. We also have our special guest, Mr. Andrew Duell, who's the president of the U.S. Boat Show Division with Informa Markets, which is a long way of saying he works on boat shows and he knows all (laughs) things about the boat shows. And uh, that's a very interesting topic, so we're going to be covering that all today. And of course, Mr. Landon McGrath, our social media guru who is going to be coming in and he just got back from the Bahamas, lucky him, uh, with the Ocean Alexander Rendezvous. So we're going to be checking that out and and a whole lot more. So you got to stay tuned. Welcome to From the Helm Boating Broadcast with Marine Max, bringing you the latest news and notes in the world of boats. Welcome to Boating Broadcast. We are your hosts. I am Lisa and that guy over there, he's Kelly. Say hello hello hello. to folks. Good to see everybody. Please interact with us in the comment section and mm-hmm. be sure to share this with your friends. They like boats too. They want to see what's going on. Yep. And for our audio only listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. If you'd like to see what you're listening to, you can always reference the Lifestyles blog section on the Marine Max app or on the Marine Max website. We have all of our information there, including transcript to today's film uh, everything that we covered today, we've got links to everything. If you want more information, we've spelled it all out for you. Yep. Uh, just to make sure that you are up to date with all the boating news. And first up, new U.S. Coast Guard laws. And we have covered this in Boating Tips Live. Mm-hmm. We've covered this a little bit. Uh, but we want to make sure everybody is aware that uh, effective April 1st, which was a little while ago, yep. the new law requires vessel operators to use either a helm or outboard lanyard or wireless ecos. ECOS on certain vessels less than 26 feet when traveling on plane or above displacement speed. So that basically means where your kill switch. Yeah. And I think a lot of people were kind of like, is, that wasn't a law before. And I know I've heard a lot of people wondering like, Hey, isn't that a thing already? But uh, now it's official. Um, you know, the U S coast guard is requiring uh, use of engine cutoff switches. I think they, if you definitely, you want to read through this article because it kind of goes through everything mm-hmm. in terms of size of boat and, and you know, who needs it. And, uh, but definitely, you know, if you have one, always use that. It's such a, yeah. a, a, a great safety measure to, if for whatever reason that big rogue wave hits you and you fall out of the boat and the boat's cruising still, you know, it, it keeps people, uh, keeps people safe. So, uh, boats less than 26 feet in length with an in- in engine capable of 115 pounds of static thrust. Uh, just know your boat and uh, and check this website out to see if it if you're uh, in that that world of needing to to have that done. But yeah, absolutely, v- very important. There were some exceptions listed in that article. Um, basically, yeah. if it's you know the main helm of the vessel is in closed cabin or the vessel is not operating on plane or at mm-hmm. displacement speed, so there there's some exceptions. Definitely make sure that you are aware before you get your family back out on the boat this summer. Yeah, and I think uh, Captain Keith, you mentioned, did discuss this in yep. his recent uh, uh, Boating Tips Live. So be sure to reach out to your local captain at Marine Max uh, for more information. Yeah, they have some good boating tips. And of course, you can always follow our show, Boating Tips Live. They yeah. go live every Monday on Facebook and YouTube and discuss various boating activities. You can actually uh, enter your questions live as they're going through and they'll they'll answer your questions. It's they're very cool. Yeah, yes. awesome. All right, so on to headlines number two. Okay. This, I think, is just cool, and we've kind of talked about it before, but this is the Volvo Penta Assisted Docking. Yeah. Next generation in marine automation. Well, that is a really cool website, I have to say. I mean, <laughs> starting off, uh, you know, you got this full-size video. I knew you like that. <laughs> um, so, so, Lisa, tell uh, the viewers about this. What it, You know, this looks like some new technology, making it easier than ever to uh, to as they say, take control and dock your boat. Uh, what goes into this? Well, it uh, essentially takes comp- it takes compensation for some external element forces and allows you to navigate tight areas with higher precision. You mm-hmm. know, think of back your backup camera in your car, how that revolutionized being able to parallel park or back into a parking spot. Kind of similar here, but it, it can, combines automation with control and provides, provides ease Uh, Mm -hmm. for both seasoned boaters and beginners uh, to just slide into some tight areas. 
Yeah, it makes things uh, easier. And you did mention, and that's something that like, I don't know if it, it's just me or what, but like, I remember when they said that there was going to be these cameras, you know, and, and I remember like the cameras when you put it in reverse in like a rental car, I'm like, <laughs> I don't need that. You know, I don't, I'm never going to use that. I'm good. I can always look at my mirrors and stuff. And then like, I use it once and then I never stopped using it at that point. It's like, it's just <laughs> so much easier to have that camera behind you. So, I mean, that kind of technology, especially when it comes to boating, I mean, there's a lot that goes into boating, especially docking and kind of rough conditions or just mm -hmm. un unfavorable conditions so having anything that allows you to uh, be a little bit more at ease um, or uh, you know just take some of the what's the word Lisa take some of the uh, complexity out of some yeah. of these situations is always good for boaters especially you know people that don't they want to get into boating I mean it really helps out in certain situations absolutely so definitely very cool feature as as we move forward in the marine industry you're starting to see more things like this that just help make boating it just makes boating easier you see you know the joystick throttles mm -hmm. um obviously um a sky hook where you can pretty much anchor via your gps system yep. and and this assisted docking fantastic for people who are you know just want to have it a little easier on their boat yeah. And, uh, you know, Volvo, knowing uh, they're a company all about safety uh, from their mm -hmm. vehicles to their boating, uh, you know, I think that this is just a better uh, experience for, for boaters to make it easier than ever to get that boat in the slip. So you got to check yep. that out. That's the Volvo assisted docking feature. Be sure to check that out. Very cool. Very cool stuff. All right. Flipping the script onto some wake boats. Tyga yeah. celebrates 30 years, which is wow. pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, a long time you know uh, <laughs> it's like man and when you think of like my age i'm like wow that's around i was i was six years old i think at this point you know when they started but yeah 30 years in the business of building these awesome boats um so shout out to taiga i mean some really cool boats always coming out of their uh their their wheelhouse for sure and yeah. uh pretty so cool so what they're doing here is offering a limited special edition 30 30th anniversary model. It's available in any ZX model. The limited edition brings a special celebratory touch to the already stunning ZX class. Mm -hmm. From the moment you get inside, you'll experience the finest materials, refined details, and the expert craftsmanship, craftsmanship that Tyga is celebrating today. Well, I think, you know, anybody loves limited edition anything. Oh, uh, yeah. And I'm sure, you know, down the road, that could be a potential collector's item, uh, maybe in 30 more years. If you have that, oh, that Tiger 30th cool. anniversary on their 60th or something, but what a cool, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the logo looks great and, uh, just some of these features on this boat definitely make it stand out and make it very special for this, uh, the special occasion for Tiger mm -hmm. boats. Well, and if you're interested in testing some Tiger boats, go to marinemax.com, hook up that boat search and, and find your boat and, and submit a little lead and you'll get a boat test. It'd be very, and, and be sure to check this video out too. This is, uh, I haven't watched it myself, but 1991 versus 2021. I'm sure like, you know, just what, what's changed in the boating industry. Oh and my I'm gosh. sure we'll, we'll be talking to, uh, to, to Mr. Uh, Andrew about that, uh, from, uh, Informa, but just what's changed in the past 30 years in boating. It's gotta be a ton. A ton. Yeah. We, we just talked about the technologies of docking. I mean, if you said that stuff to them in 1991, they'd be like, that's like science fiction. Who needs that? Yeah, who needs that? <laughs> or that, I can or who needs that? Yeah. <laughs> it's like well, um, it's... having maps, you know? Who needs you know? Who needs a map, or who needs a digital something, something? We got a map. It's like, not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Well, congratulations awesome. to Tyga. Uh, mm -hmm. That is definitely an accomplishment, and what a fun way to celebrate with a limited edition boat. One thing I also, I was watching this video, is the size of the boats has definitely gotten larger. I mean, it might be a different model, but just like, I think cars too, you know, a lot of the, the BMW 3 yeah. Series has like may, become much larger throughout the year. So I'm wondering uh, mm -hmm. in a way if boats have kind of done the same with some of their models. Interesting. Yeah, I would imagine uh, so just like that. utilizing that beam more. Yeah, that's a good point. I, that, yeah. That's probably one of the things everybody wants, right, is more space. More space. So how do you do that in the same same footprint? Yep, for sure. Well, that's, that's technology. Really cool. technology. Well, speaking of technology and, you know, in-person events, let's get into our guest interview. Please welcome our guest, Mr. Andrew Duell, president of U.S. Boat Show Division with Informa Markets. Thank you, Andrew, for joining us. Welcome Thank to the you, program. Thank you, sir. Great to be here. <laughs> 
Awesome. Well, to start, let's just kind of give everybody a background about yep. Informa. What is Informa Markets? What do you guys do? Informa Markets is the largest uh, show production company in the world, and we've got uh, trade shows uh, for the most part, B2B shows throughout uh, throughout the world. So there's probably 600 shows worldwide, and there's yes. over 200 shows in the U.S. Okay, wow. I think anybody in the boating industry knows Informa. It's the yeah. Miami Boat Show. You know, it's the big boat shows along, uh, you know, the coast of Florida. Um, so in your years working in the industry, what has surprised you most about how the shows have changed, especially in the last year? Well, in the last year, obviously, with, you know, with COVID, it's changed a lot. And we were, we were lucky enough to, you know, we worked very hard to run full Lauderdale and work with the you know, Broward County on you know, a COVID plan and we had the, you know, the GBAC, the industry standard plan. Uh, we worked from there and ended up with a 62 page document to be able to, mm -hmm. to run for Lauderdale. And then we used that also for St. Pete. And then, you know, the show we've just finished two weeks ago in, in West Palm mm -hmm. Beach. So it's, um, you know, I think people are keen to get out and see the shows. We had a fantastic uh, show in West Palm Beach. Uh, strong attendance, incredibly strong boat sales. So uh, people are definitely want to come out to a show, see the boats and see what's new. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's for sure. And especially in a state like Florida where it, uh, we, we do have some of the opportunities to allow these boat shows to take place. And especially if you, you know, if you get your ducks in a row and all the things are in place, it sounds like, you know, you had some time to to figure it out, you know, and nobody at, at first it was kind of a what's going to happen. And, and that allowed people to give it some time and, and to figure it all out. So it's great to see, uh, you know, the, the boat shows taking place like Palm Beach. Sure. I think at first people, you know, the, this time last year, everybody thought, oh, it's all going to be live. You know, it's live events are dead. It's all going to be virtual. And I think by the, the middle of summer, people were you know, <laughs> done done with virtual, you know, that was uh -huh. enough of that, you know, and so. I think, you know, it's Fort Lauderdale was obviously a huge event for us um, mm -hmm. to try and get that going. It was the first really big show of any type in the U.S. So you, we, uh, you know, we're very proud that we managed to get that and make that happen and then follow it up with St. Pete in January. And now, yeah. Pete, obviously, West Palm Beach sure. and, uh, and starting next week, uh, Sarasota. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, and it makes me wonder, I mean, you know, I've, I've been going to boat shows for many years now. Uh, how have you seen it? Obviously, COVID's a, a, a kind of a different situation altogether. But throughout the years, how, what have you seen change in, in the boat show world, in the landscape? I mean, what, what's changed and in, in made it for the better for the people to come to the shows? I think the presentation that the dealers and manufacturers put on is way more sophisticated than it ever used to be. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm making their space look like their showroom, you know, the right. same feeling, professionalism, you know, years ago, everybody would have just been in shorts and top, top sides. <laughs> and now, you know, everybody's, you know, dressed the part, you know, to receive their customers. It's, it's a completely different selling environment. Right. It's pretty crazy, Lisa. I always think when we, when you get to these boat shows and you're, you feel like you're like in some sort of business office or you know uh, but you're actually on like floating docks for the most part and it's just incredible what they can do with the space that they have on these floating docks and these these yeah. different areas to to put on these shows it's crazy yeah definitely interesting so andrew i'm curious to know you you mentioned this 26 page document that you worked with your your fellow cohorts and probably the counties to make sure that everybody was being safe have has anybody else in different industries reached out to you to see like how you successfully pulled off these events and get mm -hmm. your input yeah we've we've done some you know industry uh webinars you know similar mm -hmm. to that we did it with you know an industry association of show organizers um city of west palm beach has used the document that we prepared to give to other show show organizers that want to come and do something in west palm beach so they you know they describe it as a, a gold standard because it is a very comprehensive document that uh, was put together by our team right now with the upcoming sun coast boat show what do attendees need to know? Obviously, there's social distancing. Bring your mask. Bring your hand sanitizer. Is there anything other than that that they should be prepared for? You know, those those are the main things. We encourage yeah. everybody, everybody to wear their mask. Um, you know, social distance. Um, but th those are the the main points. Uh, we we've uh, on the cocktail barges and the other shows. We've had 
you know, waitress service only, we'll probably be doing the same thing in Sarasota. So it you know, keeps you, know, everybody wears their mask until they're seated, then, then right, you know, right. go ahead and you know, drink and eat. But uh, th those are the main things. And then I think you know, the companies will, you know, limit the showings of votes to certain numbers of people, then the votes are cleaned. We obviously yep. have different cleaning protocols with the restrooms, the entrances and everything that's, you know, had a lot of touches. We've got extra cleaning stuff on hand that are, you know, constantly cleaning the show. Well, I think that this uh, this whole issue, you know, in the past year has made it an even better experience for customers to come and more, you know, that they are allowing these more private experiences, walking aboard the yachts, looking around as opposed to, you know, hordes of people going through. Uh, and it also allows just for cleanliness in general, something that, you know, you probably and anybody could probably have a, a, a second take at and do better. So um, I think that in a way that there are certain benefits that come out of this for the for the viewers and for the people that stop by the show. Yep. No, I am interested in, um, you know, like you did mention earlier, we had to kind of think differently. And a lot of manufacturers, a lot of dealers went online and said, okay, we're going to try this whole virtual boat show thing obviously completely different experience, right? Like you don't get to sit down and have a beer with your friends and go through boats and talk about it and, and the beautiful sunshine, but just going forward. Now, what do you think the industry can learn from what, what we've gone through and what mm -hmm. we've seen and like what do boat shows look like coming into 2021 and 2022 when we don't have to social distance? Well, I think you know, the industry did very well in the, in the COVID period with people realized that boating was uh, you know, an activity that could be pursued by a family and social distance. So, um, you know, the shows um, yeah, have, a, have had an issue with lack of inventory, you know, in Fort Lauderdale and St. Pete and, and in West Palm Beach because boat so sales have been so strong. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think going forward, though, the, the new people, what's exciting to us is all the new people that are moving to Florida or new to the market. So you've got this double effect of the, the people that want to get into boating that already lived here and the new people moving down that say, well, I'm moving to Florida. I've moved my business to Florida. I can work from Florida. Mm -hmm. And they want to embrace what's great about Florida is to be out in a boat or out golfing, but the outside. So I think right. any, you know, talk to any of our exhibitors and they'll say, yeah, I saw a lot of new people, which which is what everybody's looking for, not just to greet their same customers they already know, because they could have done that without going to the show. So it's it's, it's right. very exciting for, for us and for all of our uh, you know customers. Do you see opportunity uh, from the kind of uh, what took place with digital to even broaden the, the, the viewership on your shows? I mean, do you see like an opportunity to create a virtual side of it where people can tune in and see what's happening at the actual shows? We're working on some some on on that at the moment. We're also working with uh, our new company Viva Ticketing on how we can work with our ticketing company and our exhibitors into you know so that you know we go when it's, we can go back to touch you know wristband but that mm -hmm. person, you know, several different displays and I have to keep sign in at every display. So we're we're looking at a lot of new um, products that we can bring that will make the attendees experience more seamless and it will also you know, help all of our exhibitors gather information about the attendees. Sure. Right. Lisa, uh, what I see here is this is like, it's it's the Fort Lauderdale boat show as an example, but it could be an international show where you could provide people the experience of, you know, maybe tuning into the different booths at the show with webcams or just thinking outside the box here for future. Yeah. I'm sure you guys are certainly, but uh, yeah, it can it can basically bring people from all around the world to the show if they can't make it in person, but still experience some of what you have to offer at the at these boat shows. That's an intriguing idea. Yeah. Yeah, I see a tiered <laughs> ticketing system. You know, get your yeah. live access, get your yep. digital right. access, <laughs> and you just have somebody going around the show doing what we're doing here, but in real real life, right? Going around yeah, interviewing sure. everybody. Well, you know, we've obviously we've done the TV uh, show mm -hmm. with and Bell, so you know that's that's got more successful every year. Where we've done the best in show, and yeah. you know they've covered they've covered you know the show, they've covered the lifestyle of Fort Lauderdale, they've covered you know when we've done the Yacht Chef event. So I think. The, the viewership on that has gone up dramatically over the last three years that we've been doing that. But certainly that could be an adjunct to that, you know, for sure. people that, that can't make it. Well, right. and you, you mentioned, so, uh, you know, the, the 
the excitement around boats in the past year has just completely skyrocketed. You're saying people are coming to Florida more and more because they want to be part of this, you know, experience of the lifestyle of being outside on the water. What do you see for the future of the boating industry and, and getting just this influx of people wanting to be part of this more and more, you know, how, how do you see that moving forward? No, it's exciting. I think we need to build more marinas. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where's the everybody keeping their boat? <laughs> you know, all the dry stacks where to put, put, put all the boats, you know, and obviously, you know, the waterfront homes and the sales and those have been incredibly strong. Yeah. Uh, really in our area, um, all of the, uh, Boat lift companies have been super busy with people replacing the lift or I need to get my boat out of a shed or off a trail and keep it behind the house so I can use it whenever the heck I want to use it. So right. I think that those guys have all been busy, but certainly it's, it's going to be where are we going to keep all the boats? I think it's going to be the next challenge. Right. I know Marine Max has certainly looked into that where we've uh, partnered with Skipper Buds up north to expand mm -hmm. our marina storage. And, and we've been doing some major renovations up in the northeast to to address that. And even our Fort Myers location, we were building a ton of, ton of new mm -hmm. space. I mean, you saw that coming a long time ago, right? You did. And it's, you know, it's obviously it's been pressured with all the waterfront space being taken up, you know, condos and, you know, the best, you know, mm -hmm. best use of land. And it's, but certainly it's the challenge to, uh, you know, we've got a great big uh, dry stack going in here in Fort Lauderdale now that uh, is, is enormous, but uh, I think you'll start to see more of the, the big automated, um, dry stack facilities uh, yeah. as a lot of people perhaps go to out of an inboard boat to an outboard boat that, you know, so mm -hmm. they take, they can take a, you know, 40, 50 foot uh, outboard power boat and put it in a building. <laughs> right. <laughs> 50 feet up, just slide it right well, into the spot. This, this, this building looks like it's 200 feet high. So the new one, so a lot of it's, 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 you know, it blocks out the sun. It's in Yeah. <laughs> incredible space, incredible space. Well, so I know that you primarily work with Informa with the U.S. boat market, but you have had your finger on the pulse of the marine industry for a, a, your entire career. You're on the board of a ton of things. I mean, just reading your profile, like, what are we going to talk to him about that in, in only a short amount of time? So, you know, Suncoast Boat Show is coming up. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that is a big deal. If anybody's in the Sarasota area, definitely check that out. It's going to be a fun event. It's always a beautiful event. What else is on your radar? What else is coming up that people should maybe keep an eye on the on the news for? What's coming out of the boat market? I think you know we're obviously looking forward to Fort Lauderdale in the fall and mm -hmm. you know, inviting back all the European customers, which we you know our attendees, which we yes. hope will be able to travel by that time and exhibit. You know, obviously we lost you know their participation for the most part last year and so i think you know by by october november they'll all be back with us which will be great um and then we're looking forward to the new um the new miami show which is obviously huge for us right mm -hmm. merging the two shows making the customer experience much more seamless they know where the products are and you won't have key biscayne and and you know herald plaza there'll be you know the convention center herald plaza and sea isle and then some of the super yachts at Island Garden. So it will be a much easier format to follow. We can, you know, we're, we're taking a lot of time in placing product with like product. So mm -hmm. to, to make the, the customer journey, you know, as uh, frustration free as possible. Mm -hmm. or, or lack of customer journey, right? They don't have to journey <laughs> to the other show. They're, they're right there and makes it a whole lot yeah, easier. I, I think a lot of people, you know, you get a big boat customer, but they like to go and look at the tenders. They like yeah. to go. So I think, you know, there's, there's some that are, they, they like to see it all. And, you know, there's great examples of those guys throughout our industry, our buyers. Well, and it's, 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 you know, it's, it's an experience and uh, it, you can spend a whole day, maybe a whole weekend of looking, you know, walking around oh, yeah. the big boats, uh, seeing some of the large yachts, but you know, if the family's starting to get a little hot, you can hop into the, the convention center and, and check out all the outboard mm -hmm. boats and, and some of the, the tenders, as you call them, which uh, I'm sure a lot of people that's uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> depending on. But um, no, that it's just a great opportunity for anybody to just get out there, see what the boating lifestyle is all about and experience these boats firsthand. We certainly had a lot of that in, in the Palm Beach show that people either flew down um, you know, because they can't see, you know, there's not much product to see and mm -hmm. you know, they're right. in from the West. So we had a lot of attendance from the Midwest and the Northeast. We also had, um, because Miami hadn't run, I think we had a lot of people 
uh, come up from Miami and some of those were doing a staycation. So they were coming up yeah. staying in a hotel in West Palm Beach, visit the show, go to some restaurants, you know, make it a two day experience rather than try and fit everything into one day and get frustrated. So they, I think yep. they enjoyed, they enjoyed West Palm, enjoyed the experience and you know, a lot of people bought boats. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's, it was a great it's show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I know. Now, now it's storage and service, and, yeah, and making right. sure people have fun on their Literally. boats. Yeah, <laughs> where's my boat? Yeah. Oh, for <laughs> sure. One question I had, and I always have it any any one of these boat shows, and you kind of see it as as the boat show begins, or, or you know maybe a few days or a week before is is the organization of getting something like this together. You always see these time lapse videos of all the yachts kind of backing in, moving in, coming into the show. What kind of logistics? Are needed to have something like that happen. Yeah, it's 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 a highly choreographed event, you know. But I mean, we we work closely with all the exhibitors. They were all given a certain move in time, and obviously there's there's hiccups. And but we've everybody's been doing us a long time, and most of our exhibitors quite some time. So we managed to work through that and make adjustments along the way and get get everybody in. So it's yeah, because once those boats are there, they're they're there for the show. Like a lot of times, you you right. can't leave. <laughs> Well, for sure, and it's you know, so the inboard moving on most of the larger shows is a is a, is a week long process, and you know the, the mm -hmm. land. Board. So it's it's to every day is planned exactly who's coming, exactly what time they're coming, the you know the tugboats to meet them if it's the larger boats, and with the setup crews ready on the dock, they know you know which which area is setting today. So it's 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 um, like I said, it's a choreographed event. Mm -hmm. It kind of makes my brain hurt just thinking about it. <laughs> well, we know you are a busy man and you have other meetings to run off to. So we will let you go, although we could probably pick your brain about the marine industry for quite some time. Um, any other final thoughts? Anything else you'd like the people to know? We'd love everybody to come to Sarasota. Uh, we are, you know, we're going to run, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, we'll have the fit kids fishing clinics on Saturday and Sunday oh. also. So we can go online and check that out. You get the hours and the parking arrangements and uh, everybody can uh, check that out online. And we'd love to see everybody in Sarasota. Excellent. For sure. All right. Well, Mr. Duell, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you have a lovely week and mm -hmm. we will hopefully see you in Sarasota. Thanks for including us. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Have a great day. Awesome. Cool. Well, I have to say, Lisa, um, you know, that, that's the one thing that boggles my mind uh, and I had to get off my chest was what goes into like these boat shows of to just, you ever like, you know, when you're flying into the show or something, yeah. you see just a sea of boats and you're like, there's so many people involved with that and so much cash too. I mean, like think of how many boats, like what, what do they say? Like how many billions of dollars or something it, worth of boats being at these shows? It's pretty incredible, but that's, that's part of the draw, right? Yeah. Is you want to see that and you get to walk around. So have you been to the Suncoast boat show? I don't think I've been to the Suncoast Boat Show. No, I've been to many a boat show, but it's typically the larger ones or the local Tampa Bay mm -hmm. Boat Show. Minneapolis Boat Show I went to, which was awesome. You know, it's it's yeah. it's like I feel like each one of these shows has a different flavor. You know, depending on where you are, it's kind of part of that area too. You know, mm -hmm. you go to Tampa, you kind of get a feel of the Tampa Bay area. You go to Minneapolis Boat Show, you get that feeling of these people want to get out on the water. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. It's it is a fun show. They help. They hold it at Marina Jack, so they build out mm -hmm. that area a little bit more. Oh yeah, and it's Sarasota, so it's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, April twenty third through the twenty fifth. If you're interested in going to the Sun Coast Boat Show, of mm -hmm. course you can give that a Google. Getting tickets in advance probably a smart idea just to make that process a little more easier. Mm -hmm. And of course, don't forget your mask and your hand sanitizer. Yeah, and, and definitely, you know, talk to your local Marine Max team members. And if you mm -hmm. are considering going to the show, I'm sure you know they can set you up with, as we discussed, maybe some private tours of, of some of the local, uh, some of the boats that they have on display. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what boats they have on display. So again, talk to your local Marine Max team members and they can hop you aboard that 405 Conquest or <laughs> Aviara or who knows what they got at the show, Lisa. It's always changing <laughs> depending on what's what's for sale and uh, what's what's sold out at this point. So Yeah, I would check out marinemax.com and look for that event page. Um, but you know yeah. what? Who who was just on a trip who I would really like to talk to? His Who's name's that? Landon. His oh, name is course. Landon. And <laughs> hey. I, he may have a sunburn. I don't know. I think he looked pretty good. He's got a little red, but you know. How you doing, it's, Landon? It's, it's all natural. You know, I was at my own little boat show over the weekend. <laughs> you were. It was, you it were. was down in the Bahamas. So 
Uh, yeah, I just got back from over the weekend, the Ocean Alexander Rendezvous. It was in the Bahamas in Nassau. It was at the Atlantis Hotel, which wow. uh, now I understand is is a place that a lot of people are familiar with because it's so Instagram worthy. Holy cow. <laughs> um, That's basically I, like why Instagram exists is for a place like <laughs> Atlantis, right? It, it. You know, what's funny is I found out while I was down there that it's actually in the running for one of the most Instagrammable buildings in the world. I mean, it's it's sure. such a cool location. Um but yeah, so I mean, it, it was like a boat show in and of itself. You've got, I think there were 13 Ocean Alexander yachts that came wow. down. Um, and of course, the whole weekend, what I was doing was showing them off on social media, making people back home jealous that they weren't there. <laughs> yeah, that's my job. It's, it's me. Yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but that's so, cool, though. I, and uh, it's it's one of those opportunities to allow these these owners to all get together and talk shop and enjoy yeah. the time out on the, the water with their family and friends. And that would have to be an awesome crossing, right? If, cause all these boats are probably coming from South Florida or somewhere. Right. So they're having to head over to the Bahamas. That would be a cool, especially on an OA. Oh, a hundred percent. It'd be quite the journey. You know, they're coming from uh, Southern Florida, wherever they're really coming from. There were a lot of Texans there, which was kind really? of interesting. Yeah. Cool. So I don't know if they came directly from, yeah. from Texas, but it was, it, it was the whole experience was super crazy. Awesome. Um, and, you know, what's interesting about the Bahamas is normally you, you got to go through customs and do the whole passport thing. But then you add the the pandemic on top of it. Right. Yeah. So there's a whole process that gets involved there. But they were on top of it. Mm -hmm. I had to show my health visa, my Bahama health visa so many times at so many different really? checkpoints. It wasn't like one and done with, you know, your passport per se. It was with this health visa like you show everybody even to get into the hotel. They were like, health visa I was like was yes, it I was it like wayne's done. world when they're like walking they got the alice cooper tickets and they're like showing everybody the behind the scenes like yeah. or, it was it was similar to that yeah so they were they were really on top of it and um you know you had to feel for um all of the bohemian locals and, and yeah. just everybody that was there because on top of the pandemic you've had recent hurricane situations that that's always in and of itself a struggle mm -hmm. to get through with tourists and and things like that because they really rely on that industry so yep but, uh, you know, speaking of Ocean Alexander, some of the content that I got, Kelly, I believe you've got a link there um, to our Instagram page so we can show ah. off some of the photos that I took. I'm so sure. fresh off the plane right now that I haven't even had time to put together a whole gallery. But while I was <laughs> down there, I was able to get some of the photos that I took posted up so we can kind of get an idea of what this this view looks like. It was out well, of this let's world. Let's see here. So I'm going to bring it up. We can talk. Okay, so we got. Oh, all right, here we go. So, so I imagine chat a little bit about it here. This is I'm probably like one of the first times a lot of these people have been in a group setting, right? That in terms of the owners, yeah, yeah, yeah just in, in terms a while, of uh, right. COVID and everything. Oh yep. yeah, yeah. I mean, this was one of the first opportunities where we could finally all get together and and have one of these events again, and people were excited. I mean, you can tell just in their faces, they're like. We're finally down here, and Aww. what's what was great was they had options. You know, Ocean Alexander's had options to vote and pick on their destination, mm -hmm. and I heard from Sally Dolesky, VP of OA Marketing. She said, our owners specifically said, we want to go to the Bahamas to support the people there after Aww. this crazy year that they've had um, where, you know, there's there's just not as many people there, so it was right. it was infectious the amount of fun that people were able to finally have yeah. again down there. But that's that's the Atlantis right there. Gorgeous. Some of these models um, of the boats that were down there, it was Ooh. just yeah a, yeah a ninety R or... a couple ninety R's that were down there. Of course, wow. those are a couple, no big deal. Just a couple, yeah yeah. Um, Wait, what is it? So this is a is that a tri? No. Do they consider that a tri deck? I think they do, but wow, that is a massive boat there. I'm yeah. wondering. Wow. So, just some of the the different models. That was day one when I got Ooh. in. Of course, if you've ever been to the Atlantis, you walk in. There's a full sized aquarium right in the lobby that you can go down and see. So this was just right in front of you. Tons of stingrays and and sharks in there. It was really neat. So Landon, this um, is the actual site of Atlantis, correct? Like they actually, correct. they they found it and then they just built a resort around it, right? That's how, 
it works. Basically, that's that's <laughs> yeah. It took me a second to understand what you're saying, but yes, that's it's Atlantis I'm just joking for everybody. Key. But no, that's yeah. it, and the, this is like totally a Landon type place. I feel like too. It's like you got stingrays, you got all this cool marine wildlife. I mean, this is I was, this is such a cool place. Dolphins. Oh, I was nerding out. So yes, yeah, speaking of dolphins, <laughs> Kelly, I believe you've got some photos as well that I sent you. Yes. Um, if you can maybe okay. pull up one of those, I had an experience like none other that I had never prepped for. I I went to this whole thing thinking like I'm just gonna get some fun photos of boats, but I got to participate as well. <laughs> um, I got to play with some dolphins in water, and I gotta tell you, they are literally cats in water. The way they <laughs> act, the way they just interact with each other, and you. They're like yep. cats in water, and it was really, really neat. Um, cats in water. That's an interesting. That. And were what is, and for the, for the viewers out there, who, including myself, I'm not sure exactly how the cats would typically act. What what is it about the their demeanor that kind of relates them to the cats? <laughs> just just super friendly and like coming up to your hands and kind of nudging you. And they, you know, the way they They're brush. Curious. Well, what they do is they'll swim by you and kind of brush themselves against you. If you just out yeah. hold, you hold your hand out like this, they just go right on by and just kind of like do one of these. And it was. It was so interesting like to me. Cat. Well, and of course, of course, um, I don't know if I should bring it up, but of course, I was the one on the trip <laughs> asking the trainers. I said, in terms of um, how they're treated, you know, you're not going to lie to me and or like say they're poorly treated or anything like that. But I had a serious conversation with some of the trainers about um, the dolphins that were there. You know, how long have they been there? What's their experience yep. like? And oh, these, these dolphins are all almost all rescues. Like they were in mm -hmm. gnarly situations where they were rescued and they are there at the resort for a good 60 years when the normal life expectancy of dolphins is much, sure. much lower than that. Yep. Um, so really happy dolphins, well taken care of and a blast to get to ride like that. Um, and is that it, is, is so it, cool, um, Landon. is it the actual ocean that they're in too? Is that kind of how, or is it a pool or how is that? It's a series of three to four different pools that they kind of go in between. And so the other pools are shut off from public, but then um, they bring out the the dolphins once the, you know, we go out to interact with them. Okay. Um, they bring them in there. And then at night, they've got a whole separate pool that I wasn't even able to see because I asked that too. I was like, what do they do after all this? Yeah. Um, and they have their whole own kind of area to, to play around in. Relaxation well, one, area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. One thing I know for sure, and I, I was talking about this past weekend, was no matter who you are, you could be a seasoned salty sea captain who's seen dolphins a thousand, ten thousand times, but still it, it just stops you in your tracks every time you see them out on the water. So yeah, uh, it's, it's Can you awesome. make a dolphin noise? I will not even attempt that because that would be the most embarrassing sound bite we would ever get out of this podcast. So I'm going to leave it at that. You can imagine what they sound like. It's all about clicks these days, Landon, and we need some extra clicks. So maybe yeah. make that and it might go viral and, and we could get some extra oh, clicks. Boy. So. Well, no, yeah. no, we'll skip it for today. Maybe uh, unless you guys out there want to hear Landon do, uh, you know, dolphin noises. Um, yeah. You can hey, reach Lisa, out to me go. on private That's social media. Close, or something. Right? Yeah. That's That was close enough. <laughs> that works. Oh, that's um, great stuff. All right. Well, hey, that's I don't very know. Cool, Landon. It was it was one of the coolest experiences of my life. So I I really thank you know of course our team for sending me there, but the Ocean Alexander team puts on a great event. Um, mm -hmm. You know those owners are spoiled in a big way <laughs> with with Sally because Sally puts on such a cool event. Uh, What's one thing that you take away like from what you see of the owners of an Ocean Alexander that you could just tell that they're like this is what we want to do? I mean, is there anything that you take away that uh, about the experience for them. Oh, sure. The the Ocean Alexander, because that's the interesting thing is all the different brands, the owners have kind of a personality that you can put into a group. And Ocean Alexander owners are are very laid back and mm -hmm. just just like to enjoy, you know, their time with each other. But even just, you know, being able to do their own thing by taking the yachts out a couple of them during the day when they had free mm -hmm. time was just take the boat out and yep. enjoy the bohemian waters um, kind of away from everybody. Yeah. They enjoy that kind of quiet. And I loved it. I loved interacting with them and getting to know some of the owners. Um, just w some of the most chill human beings on earth. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Oh, good. I'm so, glad you had a good time. You tip, you, you figure, you know, that to, to own an ocean Alexander, you probably had to work your butt off your entire life to get to that point. And uh, they're now they're just enjoying it on their ocean Alexander. So that's what it's all Amen. about. One, yep. 100%, which is a funny segue into my second <laughs> social, so, social story here. This was something yep. interesting of, of uh, somebody that 
in a way worked his butt off, but maybe not <laughs> in the sense that we're talking. <laughs> Kelly, go ahead and bring this photo yeah. up that I came across on social media. Let's see if Lisa can recognize who this is. Recognize who that is. He is in a robe smoking yeah, a let me bring stogie. It up. On a boat. That is an old flag, man. Correct. Looks- this photo was taken in 1931. 1931. Oh my gosh, no clue. So we are looking at one of the most prolific, infamous mobsters of the of the U.S. history. We're looking at Al Capone on the back of his yacht in 1931. Wow. I randomly came across this image <laughs> and thought, this is interesting. I got to yeah. know more. I got to look into this. So I actually pulled up, I, I Googled, you know, Al Capone yacht. So I, mm-hmm. I, I've got an article here if kelly you can click on that in the document here that kind of explains this boat that he had and apparently i don't know exactly the brand but he didn't do anything illegal that we know of on this yacht it was purely (laughs) for pleasure you know even even hard-working guys like al capone gotta chill out a couple times too (laughs) you know and i say that facetiously by no means am i trying to you know raise up al capone as like this great guy because we all know how evil he was but um, yeah, this was his boat, and just it was called the Flying Cloud. Wow, it's beautiful, if you, actually. If you scroll down, there's actually a couple more images. Um, you can see the interior. Again, you're, wow. you're looking at a boat that was built around the 1920s, and then that photo was right. from 1931. Mm-hmm. But it's still around today. It was actually that's incredible repurposed and um, has had a lot of work done on it because there's a photo here that's a before of today. Oh, wow. so this is this is what it was like yeah modern day but it was just sitting for years and years correct right? so that okay. that photo shows the the before the restoration and that's the after the wow. um restoration that's um, crazy i'm not sure exactly where it's based but i thought it was just a neat story it looks to, up it looks like it's up in the northeast maybe somewhere um and proof that it was his if you scroll down just a little bit more to the next image there's mm-hmm. a, a photo that shows the whole boat with him on it there you are. So that that is Al Capone enjoying flying cloud with his son Sonny in the cockpit. That's awesome. Interesting. That's it's a dope. cool story. It's such a 1920s, you know, like um, oh for sure. Reminds me of like like steampunk or whatever they call it, you know, with right. like the the portholes and um, just. <laughs> but it it's very beautiful, and it makes me think of you know some of the boats we carry, like MJM. It's similar to that in a way, but it also shows like the timelessness of of that mm. style of boat. You know, I mean this these boats like this are still being made today, and they look mm-hmm. almost like this because once you get it right, you you kind of just stick with it. So yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. So What's maybe, the name of it? Alert? Is that the name? The name of the boat itself was Flying Cloud. Oh, okay. Just I'm floating reading along. Back. So I, I always think it's interesting. The rare times that I come across these historical images of famous people on boats, because uh, I've now seen a number of presidents actually on, mm-hmm. on boats. And mm-hmm. that's something I'm maybe I'll have to wait for another social segment on a future episode, but there's a number of images of various presidents on boats that they owned or just that they were traveling on. Yep. Do a whole dedicated love, show, presidents on boats. I love that kind of historical stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's also, it makes me think, you know, like Sopranos, there was many episodes where they were on boats. And I think, uh, it, I'm sure they probably took a little bit of, uh, some of this information too, and uh, applied it, like, especially the picture that you show, which I have to bring up again, cause it is such a great shot of, it's like, after a long day of, of mob work, you know, he's just relaxing on his <laughs> mob uh, work. Al Capone in his jammies with his loafers on, just I, with a fishing pole. I love pole. how cash. That's, I yeah, love that's, how casual he is. That's what life is all about right there. I mean, just hanging out, smoke, smoking a stogie and enjoying the day. I We're all united not. by water, Kelly. <laughs> we are all united by water. Very good Great segment. Fine. Good job, Landon. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> all awesome. right. Well, as we round out today's episode, Kelly, do you have any other final thoughts for the folks? Hey, it's it is cool to see you know boat shows uh, coming back and uh, and doing some really cool things. And and I do you know I I always like to think of the glass uh, half full for sure. And uh, seeing what this last year was in in ways that can make the boat show experience better. You know, sure we're going back to the shows, but. I think it's making people think a little differently about what else they can do to get more people even at the show that that t- didn't typically go to the show uh, mm-hmm. using the di- digital landscape. And of course, Marie Max has been working on that, uh, you know, getting people to shows or, or the show experience, even if you can't 
physically be sitting in Fort Lauderdale, uh, you know, Oklahoma, Seattle, Minneapolis, where you, wherever yeah. you're at, you can still experience right. these types of shows because of the, the work that Marine Max does and, and brings the boats to you. So, uh, where there's, uh, you know, where there's, where there's struggles, you can, you can find something that, uh, that helps out everybody who can't make shows. So right. yep. the, the possibilities are endless. I mean, even you, you think of, um, you know, so Azimut normally has their VR goggles where you can walk aboard the boats. And I believe I brought this up in a previous episode, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, with shows, even you could, you could set up camera work to where you can virtually walk the docks of everything. Mm -hmm. And even outside of, if you're not able to attend, you think about what that opens up to people that have to be in wheelchairs and are just unable to climb aboard boats and things yeah. like that. Now they've got the means to be able to walk docks, see different models, even, mm -hmm. and then from there, climb on the different boats. Um, I think the future is very bright in terms of um, boat shows and the technology involved. Well, not to go off on a tangent, but you just made me think of too. I mean, what we're doing here does that as well, because I've, I've read many comments from people who state, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I, I can't make it to the shows. I'm in a wheelchair. Like there's, there's been those comments of people who say, you yeah. know, I can't go to these things. Thank you for bringing it to me. Uh, and that's what we're here for too, is to, to bring the boating lifestyle to everybody who who maybe can or cannot and, uh, and just enjoy it. So, yep. Excellent. All right, Landon, any other final thoughts from you, sir? Nothing else from me. <laughs> I think that's a good way to end it. So big thank you to Mr. Andrew Duell, president mm -hmm. of U S boat show division with Informa markets. He did, you know, disperse a little bit of information. I'm sure we could have picked his brain a little bit more, oh, but yeah. maybe we'll have to have him back when he's got more time. Um, <laughs> Again, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. If you have ideas of who we should interview next, please leave those in the comments section. Kelly will read them, and we will oh, yeah. we will follow up because we are here for you. We are bringing you boating information, boating news, and fun facts about the boating industry. A reminder, tune in every week at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook or YouTube. And we hope you enjoyed today's boating broadcast. And as always, stay healthy and boat happy. We'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of From the Helm Boating Broadcast. To keep up with the latest news and notes in the world of boats, be sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and wherever podcasts can be heard. Until next time, we'll see you out on the water.